Sports Talk Mississippi rolls on from SEC Media Days, and uh, it's been another good day here in uh, Dallas. We are happy to be joined by Josh Pate. Uh, Pate State and all that goes with it. First of all, congratulations on all the success. Thank you. To, to have started where you did and to have built it into what it is, it, it's a really cool story. Yeah, it is. It's, it's one I don't mind telling uh, because I know – at any given point, there are hundreds, maybe thousands of people currently in the situation I was in. Yeah. And, you know, at the time, it was really weird. It was early 20-teens-ish to where the whole Internet thing had not latched on to broadcast. And so there were very, very finite amounts of paths into our industry. Now, it's still finite, but there are many, many more paths into our industry. You can take your fate into your own hands a little bit more, so to speak. So it's a story I don't mind telling because it's an attitude that I would love to be encouraged among more people. Yeah, but but there is also the fact that you got to be good on camera and the insights have to be good and it's got to make sense and you got to put in the work. It's not just, oh, I'm going to have a podcast or, oh, I'm going to do a live stream. Yeah, um, that's learned on the fly. You know, if you think from a psychological standpoint of what you're trying to do in our business – we, uh, all of us, collectively sitting here, all of us watching, are sports fans. Okay, that collection of people is the most stubborn collection of people in the world because <laughs> everybody in the group thinks that they know everything about that thing. Like you and Barrett Salih are stubborn. I watched the clip of what you were talking oh, about, expansionists, and I don't agree with almost anything. Yeah, so here's, but the, it's okay. here's the challenge. Okay, so how do you talk in a way that makes the most stubborn group of people in the world stop talking? And at least pay attention to what you have to say. Yeah. That's the whole craft. That's, that's the whole psychological edge that you got to have. And so, you know, I would sometimes in the spring and summer, I'll do like uh, consultations or I'll speak to like college classes on that. And everyone will say, oh, I want to I do what you do. I want to get into that business. And they'll ask for advice. And I, the first thing I say, it sounds so jerkish, but it's not. The first thing I say is, why would anyone care what you have to say? And it always takes people by surprise. Uh, what? <laughs> well, what do you mean? That's rude. No, 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 quite literally. If they don't care what you have to say, you got, you got no future. There, no yeah. one's going to put a live mic in front of you. So, yeah, and uh, you look, if you don't actually have something good to say, you better be able to fool them enough to where they just think it's good enough to where they need to be quiet. Give them a reason to care. Um, largely, Ole Miss is a team that is in uncharted territory. Sure. We, we were talking about it a little bit, and, I feel like an overwhelming majority of people that are here at SEC Media Days expect Ole Miss to be part of the first 12-team college football playoff. And that is – there have been one-offs where, you know, somebody's like, oh, I think this Ole Miss team's going to be hot, or oh, they're going to be good here. But that's all they were. They were one-offs, whereas this is kind of consensus. Yeah, they've to this point been the sneaky team that you better be careful with. Mm. They've been the team that will upset the playoff contenders. They themselves haven't been thought as that. Uh, I know part of that is expansion. So here's my counter to that. I agree with everything you said. I agree with that sentiment. I share that sentiment. So I'm, I'm with everyone. I'm not knocking Ole Miss. My question has been, if we are to accept that their performance the last two years was good enough to make a 12-team playoff, and we're to believe that this is the best team Kiffin's had, then do they not have to do more than what they've done? Than or just get in. Yeah, do they have to do more than just get in? So – I, I've gone back and forth because a few people have asked me about Ole Miss this week, and I've, they've asked what success is, or can they get over the hump? That's like a buzz phrase everyone loves to use, so I want to know what the hump is. Is the hump just getting in the playoff? Um, is the hump going to Atlanta? Like, what is it? To me, I'll, I'll clearly define it, whether they go to Atlanta or not. They need to be in that playoff. They need to win at least one game in the playoff. That, to me, would be doing something more definitively than what Ole Miss football has done to this point under Lane Kiffin. So, as someone who grew up in Oxford – going to Ole Miss games, have watched it, have worked on the radio crew, the, the whole deal. I think part of me it's because this is what I want, but I would almost take it a step farther than that and say they need to host a playoff game. If they're not one of the top four, okay, that's going to be one of the, the conference champions. But being in that 5, 6, 7, 8 spot, because if you're going to win that game, I think there's going to be an overwhelming home field advantage for the four teams that host those games. It's going to be wild. Oh, that's fair. Okay, I got, I got what you're saying there. I, yeah. I, I could buy that. Yeah. I could I could I also I almost wonder like there's this thing that everyone's talking about right now of what's more advantageous. Is it more advantageous to have not gone to Atlanta than to go to Atlanta and lose and 
I, I'm really interested to see how that plays out because yeah. there's a world where Ole Miss sits there as the five seed mm -hmm. watching, you know, Georgia and Texas and Atlanta and say, oh, well, you mean to tell us we get a week to dust ourselves off and then we get to host, like, Liberty or someone like that? You are punching your ticket to the semifinal at that point. It's really what your quarterfinal, whatever that would be. Uh, that would be a successful season. And also, if they're there, that means they stayed healthy enough. Yeah. If they're there, that also means – the offense was everything you wanted it to be, which means you get to see like a Lane Kiffin offense with all of these dudes who returned and all these dudes they infused from the portal, and you turn them loose in a postseason setting, and it feels like a wild card team in baseball. Like once they get in, anything can happen. Yeah. What about long-term sustainability? I mean, people – I saw a blue blood ranking uh, earlier this week, and isn't today's college football so different that – because I see this now or never thing with Ole Miss. They have to do it now because if they don't do it now, they never will. But, I mean, two years ago, Lane Kiffin had an Ole Miss team with almost entirely different players in this exact same position. Do you think that in this new era, it's not now or never for Ole Miss because they've, in the recent – in the NIL portal era, they've already kind of been – what they're expected to be this year. Yeah, so I'm a little more – you're talking to me a little bit more with that because I'm still someone who has to be sold a little bit more that they're just going to maybe not fly as high as a program as Georgia does, but that they're going to be in that conversation every year because still, I've still got it in my head that we do things the old way. And I've still got it in my head, therefore, that you've got reload teams and then you've got rebuild teams. And while rebuilding may not mean four and eight, it does mean you have to take a step back. Georgia never has to take a step back. Uh, Bama under Saban never took a step back. They may not win it every year, but they're right there in the conversation every year. If Ole Miss really has ascended there, and this time next year we'll know that because this time next year would be the gauge for that, then uh, that's one of the quieter, biggest accomplishments you could have. Like, yeah, it's one thing if they make the playoff and win a game this year, but to, to the degree that we've been talking today, a lot of people expect that. Far fewer people expect them to then be right back next year because it takes a little time to reload there. Now, have they developed or, or created a sustainable model there where they can afford to lean on the portal a little bit more? Maybe they don't need perennial top 10 or even top 15 classes in traditional recruiting. That may be so. Uh, my opinion on that has always been I believe in high school recruiting. Fundamentally, I believe in it. I believe your roster has to be majority built by it. And if someone pulls it off and doesn't lean on it heavily or as heavily, I'm going to let that be the exception to my rule. There will always be exceptions. They may be one. Um, but that's, that's where I am with Ole Miss. Like I'm thinking about them and I'm thinking, I think this is a big year because I do think it's reasonable to expect maybe there's a step back taken. Mm -hmm. If I'm wrong, that's way bigger a story than just what an individual team does. That's a program mm -hmm. evolving. Yeah, and you are starting to see a little bit of a shift more towards high school recruiting. Last, ca uh, last class was uh, a little bit bigger than you would expect from Lane Kiffin, and they're doing kind of the same thing right. this year as well. Visiting with Josh Pate uh, at Late Kick Josh on Twitter. You can watch his show. It streams online also with CBS Sports and CBS Sports HQ. Mississippi State was here today. Jeff Levy um, has been – when we visited with him, I, I, I said, people started talking about you at UCF. They're like bright young minds. Right. And then at Ole Miss, people are like, that's a future head coach. Uh -huh. And then in Oklahoma, it's like, okay, when's it going to happen? And now here it is. I asked him if it was a little bit surreal for him. But unlike some guys that get thrust into the position, he has been tracking toward this for a long time. How does he make it work? He has. Uh, do it the same way Lane Kiffin did it. You know, there's a lot of similarity there. When we went and visited with him in the spring over in Starkville, you guys know uh, probably better than I do even. Levy's not really shy about telling you they're going to go after it. Like, they have full confidence in their plan. Um, they don't shy away from the idea of getting into battles for high school recruits in the state of Mississippi. A everyone listening to this program understands how much talent that state pumps out. The nation doesn't. Uh, yeah. Folks who are local do. So – they do it the exact same way. I don't think the profile of the teams would be too dissimilar from a 30,000-foot perspective. I think uh, one thing to just pay attention to, I know the last two times I've been on this show I mentioned this, I'll mention it once more, is did they stick with this dynamic of him having the fastest offense in the country in terms of plays per minute? Because if you do that, you got to have a different caliber of defensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. you got to have a guy that's willing to understand – this isn't necessarily a defensive-oriented team. Oh, we've got to be opportunistic. Like, we've got we to pray on turnovers. We've got to be really good inside the 20s.
But, eh, I mean, you know, they're going to get their yards. They got a guy who's never called plays in that position right now. So you marry inexperience as a play caller at D.C. with fastest offense in the country. And I think uh, most of us who have watched the sport for a little while understand there's a chance for it to go a little sideways there. Could be. That's year one, okay? Year one's year one. Like, longer term, do they learn from that? And are we sitting here a year from now saying, all right, well, Jeff Levy, baptism by fire, learned his lesson. Here are the tweaks he's making. It's going to be interesting to see. Josh Pate, uh, Late Kick Josh on Twitter. Check his show out. It's really good football info. Thanks for your time. I appreciate you guys having me. More coming up from SEC Media Days after this.